You know what's always fun is a good optical illusion, and what's even more fun is trying to 3D print an optical illusion. And today, we're gonna be doing just that. We're gonna be taking this optical illusion that was created by Think Fun that you can print with a standard inkjet printer and then cut out with some scissors and then piece together to create this dragon that has eyes that will follow you. Now, I first saw this illusion a handful of years ago here in Rochester, New York at the Strong Museum of Play, where I'm happy to say that it's still on display for all of your kids to enjoy. And even though this illustration here is in multiple colors, I'm gonna be using our Elegoo Neptune 4 Plus, which is a standard 3D printer. It doesn't have multi-color printing capabilities, but what's amazing about this is the creator of the file, Ajax 3D, used a software called HueForge, which allows you to create these transitions between multiple colors for any 3D printer. And basically how HueForge works is you take an image, import it into the software, select some colors, colors, and then it will give you the detailed information of how to print that that you can carry on over into your slicer of choice. Now, one other thing that I'm going to be doing that I have never used until this project is I just recently got my hands on the Sunlu S4. This is a filament dryer here, and it's a four roll filament dryer. So this is going to be the perfect add-on for this project for my Neptune 4 Plus. And in fact, I'm going to be using this a lot more, I think, along with some of these other Neptune 3D printers. I think it's going to be a very nice paired combination here, but this is going to allow me to dry out some of the four rolls that I'm going to be needing to use for this project. Now, one issue that I know I'm going to have immediately before I even get started with this is that the default firmware that comes with the Neptune 4 Plus or the Neptune 4 Max doesn't have the pause command built into it. So if you want to plug in, I think it's the M600 is the pause command in your slicer at a certain layer height, it's not going to work properly. So I need to update the firmware for this printer, which is a really straightforward process of going online. I can get the repository from the files. I'll have linked to down below, but I have a file that I need to run directly on the printer itself. And then once I've run that, I can take another file that I'm going to run on the display unit for the printer. And keep in mind, after you run a firmware update on the machine, you are going to have to go back through your bed leveling process. And if you are having bed leveling issues, updating the firmware might solve some of those issues. Now, I'd also recommend running a test print with a calibration cube using the pause command function, which is M600 in your slicer, and going through and just testing this out to make sure that everything's set up properly before you run through and start the full project. And if you're not familiar with how to do that, in Orca Slicer on the preview screen of when you're slicing your file, you can, on the right-hand side there, the little slider, once you get to a specific layer height, you can right-click, add custom G-code, and type in M600. Now, depending on what printer you're using and the slicer that you're using, the original files that Ajax 3D created were for another printer and slicing software altogether. So I'm gonna be using Orca Slicer for this. So as I bring that file into the slicer, I need to go in and take note of where those layer height changes are taking place at which particular layer heights on the preview of that particular file. Once I have that information, I can then swap that to my printer that I'm gonna be working with, which is again, the Neptune 4 Plus. Then I can go into the preview for the slice of the file here and update those pause commands. So it says an M600 instead of the color change because this particular printer isn't gonna recognize a color change since it's not a multi-color printer. And as I mentioned, I was gonna be using this dry box for the actual print. So I've got my Elegoo 3D printer filament here loaded up in this. I've been running it overnight here before I start our first set of prints. But what I'm already seeing that I'm not liking is there's no great solution for me to run the PTF tube from the box here to the printer without it falling off or just like getting in the way. So what I'm going to do is quickly 3D model a file to help solve this issue. And I'm going to jump on my iPad in Shaper 3D to do this. And after about, I don't know, 30 minutes of modeling, I now have a file that I've gone and printed that I've shared down below that if you need a clip for a PTF tube for the Neptune 4 Plus or the 4 Max, you'll find links to that down below. But it's perfect for anyone that's wanting to use any sort of dry box plus their printer. 
And while our first print's running, I wanted to say a big thank you to Elegoo for sponsoring today's video. Again, I'm using the Elegoo Neptune 4 Plus. This is a large to mid-size 3D printer that's affordable and prints incredibly fast, allowing you to print some really large things in a short amount of time. They also make some amazing filament that I love to run not only on my Elegoo printers, but any of the other fast 3D printers that are out there. If you're interested in more information about any of Elegoo's products, you'll find more information about that down below. So I went and 3D printed two sets of these and different color combinations, and I am just loving the results that I'm seeing from these prints. It took just about, I think, eight hours for those to print with the different color changes where the prints just pause, and then I could come in and swap those colors out. Out. Uh, this is printing at an extremely low layer height, and that's what's helping some of the color transitions take place in the prints. And just to further highlight that, here is a print that I used with the default settings that were provided by Ajax 3D from Hueforge. And here's one that I just used with the standard print profile, where I was just pausing the print at those same specified layer heights and changing the filaments without using some of the thinner layer lines. Now, this looks pretty good, but it's not as smooth of a transition between the colors that we're seeing from the one with those specific settings from Hueforge. However, the print time difference is quite significant. Again, this one originally took almost eight hours and this one was two hours. Also, I ended up having an issue with the very first iteration of this that I tried printing here in blue where one of the corners started to peel. So what I ended up doing for the second rounds of prints for this, and I'd recommend this if you're printing anything really flat like this, is potentially upping the bed temperature slightly. So I upped mine to 65 and I put down a thin film of a glue stick. That's gonna help the print stay stuck to the bed without me having to add any sort of skirts or anything like that to this that I might have to trim away. And here's where I would recommend printing a paper version of this before attempting it, because with the paper version, we can easily cut everything out and then follow the instructions so you have a better idea of how this is all gonna fold together and how we're gonna need to do this with our filament versions of this is use, I'm gonna use a heat gun to heat up our print so that we can more easily bend the prints to fit this dimensions that we need it to or the orientations to make this optical illusion work. Now you just need to follow the instructions on the printed paper and they're also included on the back of the printed file that you can try and follow when it comes to creasing the print. And check out this amazing 3D printed dragon illusion by Think Fun. This turned out so friggin' cool. There is one major downside to these 3D printed files though. There's no easy way for them to stand freely on their own. So I'm debating on trying to make a base for them so that it'll more easily stand or just glue them down like Ajax 3D recommended. This was also my first experience printing anything with Hueforge. I'll have links to Hueforge down below that you can learn more about that. I ended up buying a license to the software late last year and I have a really giga sized 3D print that I'll be doing with that here, hopefully in the upcoming months. I also wanted to take a moment to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continuous support. If you're interested in things like the 3D printer profiles that I use for my 3D printers, you can find that over in my Patreon. And if you're interested in printing one of these for yourself, and I would really recommend that if you have kids, I'll have links to the file that I used down below. And if you have any other really cool Optical Illusion 3D prints, please let me know because I am so enjoying this project. Hey, thanks so much for watching you all and I'll see you next time.